A manufacturer knows that their items have a normally distributed length. Oh, really? Well, let me get set up here. Let's make a bell curve because it says normally distributed. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, with a mean of 18.9 and a standard deviation of 4.1 inches. Oh, so it's not a standard normal distribution with mean of zero and a standard deviation of one and Z score boundaries. It's actually a non-standard normal distribution with a mean of 18.9 and a standard deviation of 4.1 and what we might call X values along the horizontal axis. And um, let's go ahead and put that down in our in our spreadsheet. Our mean is 18.9, our standard deviation is 4.1, and I'm going to go ahead and mark that mean right in the center of my bell curve on the horizontal axis, which really represents the x-axis or a number line, right? And so there's my mean, 18.9. Continuing to read, it says, um, if one item is chosen at random. Okay, so that means only one item is being chosen at random, so that means I do not need to use the central limit theorem, right? So the central limit theorem is on page um, 27 of my reference packet here, or it would be in the textbook. Um, explaining that when we are so selecting a sample of n items, then sometimes uh, the central limit theorem will help us answer the question about the sample mean of those n items. But since we are only selecting one, we don't need to apply the central limit theorem. So that is helpful to know that I do not need to apply the central limit theorem and do anything with my standard deviation. Okay, so we're not going to have to mess around with changing the value of the standard deviation. So this is really just like a normal, uh, regular, I should say, um, not, I don't know, using the word normal can get confusing since we're talking about the normal distribution, right? Um, so this is just a question that we're looking at a single value at a time. So we can stay up in the earlier parts of our lessons for normal distributions. We don't need the central limit theorem. I am using Excel here, so I'm going to be looking at my page called Excel for Normal Distributions to help me along if I can't remember what to do here. All right, and so the question says, um, what is the probability? Oh, okay, so I'm looking for a probability. That means I'm looking for an area. Okay, so the, I'm going to shade a region underneath the bell curve and I'm going to find out what that area is. And I'm going to be doing objective one in that case, right? So objective one here says find a probability. In other words, find an area from a known boundary, right? So they would have to give us a known boundary, either an x value or a z score. And in this case, since it's non standard, we would just call it an x score instead of a z score. Um, so we should see that they've given us a boundary, an x value, that would be a position on the horizontal x-axis there. So let's see, we'll continue reading the problem. It says, um, what is the probability that it, this one randomly selected item, is less than 16.8 inches long? So that 16.8 inches is the x value. that that's being discussed here, the boundary, right? So that's how I knew to continue my sketch by marking where that boundary 16.8, that X value was, and since it falls, um, since it is less than 18.9, which is my mean, 16.8 is to the left of the mean along the number line. Then drawing that boundary vertical line up till it touches the bell curve, I have now created two sections of the um, region under the bell curve. And what I'm looking for is the area of the region to the left of that boundary. And the reason I know it should be to the left is because we were asked about the probability of getting a value less than 16.8 inches. And since I know number lines increase from left to right, 
I understand that values to the left of 16.8 would be less than 16.8, so I'm focused in here. And this is the region I want to find the area for. Something else I'm just going to notice about my sketch right now is that this shaded region represents less than half of the area under my bell curve. And I know that the total area under the bell curve has to be 1 since all the probabilities have to add up to 100% or 1 as a decimal. So looking at this region that is shaded here, seeing that it's less than half, I know that it is actually literally less than half. The area here of this region is going to be less than 0 0.5. So that's just helpful for me to keep in mind when I go to find the answer because you can see my final answer here ended up being 0.3 and um, 0.3 is less than 0.5 which matches the, what I'm seeing in my sketch so that gives me greater confidence in my answer. Uh, what else did I do here? Um, when I rewrote the problem just notice like I was looking at this um, part of the exercise where it tells me what I need to do right and I just rephrased it a little more simply. I said find the probability and then I put in parentheses the area, right? Whenever we read the word probability, we know we're looking for area. That is less than, and then I put in parentheses to the left of, okay? You want to just keep translating these things in terms of what it would look like on the sketch and then make your sketch as you go along, okay? Um, I also just wrote that objective out in proper probability denotation. So it says P of X less than 16.8 equals, and then I wrote norm.dist. Why did I write that? Well, norm.dist is the function in Excel that allows us to find the probability um, to the left of a given boundary. And I have that also in my reference packet here. I, I put under here if I'm looking for a left area, which is one of three cases that I have noted here that you might be asked to find. Okay, you could also be asked to find an area to the right of a given boundary or the area in between two boundaries or even the area outside of the two boundaries. So in that case, if you were asked for the area on, on the outside of the two boundaries, then you could find the one in between and subtract from one. Um, so these three cases are, the, are what you need to know to answer these types of questions for this objective, which is finding a probability from a known or given boundary. Um, and this one is a left area, so I'm just focused on this top part right here, and that's why equals norm.dist makes sense for what I'm doing here, right? P of x less than a number equals norm.dist. Now also, um, I got distracted by what just popped up there, <laughs> some kind of notification from Facebook. Um, I meant to silence those notifications for this, but I didn't, so now I'm going to have to cut it out. But if I don't cut it out, then you get to hear me just babbling. Uh, let's see. Um, what we have here is norm.dist, then we're going to put in either an x value or a z score as appropriate for the situ situation. And in this problem, remember, the mean was not zero and the standard deviation was not one, so it's not a z score. It's an x value, right? So we put in the 16.8 x value comma then the mean that was given 18.9 then the standard deviation that was given for 4.1 and then notice in either case you always are going to say true and that's all we need to do to find the answer using excel okay so norm.dist and i put in the 16.8 comma 18.9 comma 4.1 comma true and i got my answer okay now you will round it as recommended in the directions um, sometimes I just copy and paste it, but if it does have any kind of recommendations about how to round, I'll usually follow that. Now notice that the answer that I have inputted right here is not the answer that is showing on my spreadsheet. It's a little different, very close, but a little different. Um, I did enter this answer earlier and make sure that it was marked correctly, but this one here is um, the answer I got by using the z-score table. So if you don't have um, Excel or if you don't have a calculator with the normal distribution programmed into it, you can use a z-score table. This is the old-fashioned way of doing it. And in the reference packet, all the way at the very bottom are the z-score tables. Um, so 
we're looking at an area that's to the left of the mean, or I'm sorry, we're looking at a boundary. Okay, the 16.8 is to the left of the mean. Now, if these were z-scores, remember the zero is in the center when we're looking at a standard normal distribution. So all the values to the left of the center are negative z-scores. So I'm looking in the negative z-score table, but I have to look up the z-score and then find the area that is in the cross-section um, of the first two digits across the left column and the last digit on, across the top row. I'm going to find the intersection of the column and row, and that's going to be my probability. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to need a z-score. I don't have a z-score. I have an x-value for a non-standard normal distribution, 16.8. So since that is not a z-score, I'm going to have to turn it into a z-score in order to be able to use this approach. Now, we learned before how to convert a non-standardized value into a standardized value, or in other words, how to standardize any given value uh, from a non-standard normal distribution. And these are the formulas we learned, right? And all it is to find a z-score based on a given x value and mean and standard deviation is you take the x value, find out how far it is from the mean. You subtract x minus the mean, then you get that distance, and it'll either be positive if the value's to the right of the mean or negative if the value's to the left. That's how we get a negative z-score for values that are to the left of the mean. And then whatever that distance is, we divide it by the standard deviation, basically saying how many standard deviations fit into that space. And that's why z-scores can be thought of as a number of standard deviations. And that helps us know like how strange or how unlikely or uncommon a value is based on how many standard deviations away from the mean you had to go to get there. Because the closer to the mean it is, the more common the value will typically be. Um, so when we look at our z-score table, we do need to have a z-score in order to find the probability um, that corresponds with that position in relationship to the mean. So here's 16.8 in relationship to the mean. What is the distance here? It's going to be a negative distance, and then I want to know how many standard deviations, in other words, how many times can I divide that dis distance by 4.1? And that will give me my z-score. Um, or if that all bothers you, you simply memorize the z-score formula. And the z-score formula is just x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So here I put um, a place for my x value, 16.8, and then I'm going to convert it to a z-score, and I'm going to do that by um, first taking the x value, 16.8, and I'm subtracting the mean, 18.9. Then I'm going to take that quantity and divide that distance by 4.1, which is the standard deviation, and that's going to turn it into a z-score. So I got negative 0.5. 1, 2, 2. Now z-scores in the z-score table most of the time, almost all of them are two decimal places. So I'm going to break this up so that I can find it in the z-score table. I'm going to round it to two decimal places, right? So rounded to two decimal places, that would be negative 0 0.51. So in the left hand column, I'm going to find um, negative 0.5. Then I'm going to align whatever that row is with the column that has the heading uh, with the 1 at the end, right? Because it's negative 0.51, so 1 is the last digit of my rounded z-score. So um, I know I'm going to be in this second column here, second column from the left, right? But I want to go down, find on the left, negative 0.5. To, that will represent my first two digits of my z-score. So negative 0.5 right here, that's um, this row here, and so it got me to actually this value. This one is not right. This one is the one we want, 0 0.3050. Now, um, whether I put in this answer from the z-score table or this answer that I got using norm.dist in Excel, it was marked correctly. Um, which just indicates that this problem was designed so that you could answer it correctly using either technology or the old-fashioned standard, um, standard normal distribution z-table. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.